FederalCoach.com, a new surgeon's third solo case. Hey, resident surgeons, it's time to ramp up your learning. It's July of the academic year, and we want to show you resident cases at least a couple a week to get you in that mood to get your learning sped up and ramped up. Now, this video also is sped up, so that's why things are happening pretty quickly. This young resident has assisted and attending for hundreds of cases, let's say 150, 200 cases. And by assisting, that means this resident was allowed to do por parts of the procedure or portions of the procedure. As a result, this resident has developed a pretty reasonable skill set here. And this is the third case where the resident's doing things solo. It's a pretty good looking incision there, by the way. Good draping too, good dilation. Let's see that rexus. Now, by at assisting the attending and doing parts of the surgery, you're able to back into the cases, meaning the last step of surgery probably the easiest, right? Moving viscoelastic, sealing the incisions. And then before that, lens insertion. Before that, filling up capsular capsule bag. Before that, cortex removal. Before that, nucleus removal. And that's tougher. And then, of course, the beginning steps, which you're seeing here, is incision and rexus, are critical because a poor incision will leak during the case, causing anterior chamber instability, and a poor rex is going to make nucleus removal very challenging. So that's why you back into the cases here. So this resident has really learned a lot and has pretty good skills. So for the third solo case, it's a little misleading because, of course, this resident has done portions of, you know, 100 or 200 different cases. So they're struggling to get the probe in there. Use your other hand. Where's the chopper hand? Get some counter traction by fixating the eye through the paracentesis. And here there's a lot of movement of the eye. You notice how we want the eye to stay in primary. Here's the groove. Grooves are looking pretty good. And there you go, deeper in the center, a little shallow on the periphery. Very nicely done. You may want to even widen up that groove a little bit. Let's see the crack. And let's see, putting the instruments deep in the groove and spreading it apart. There you go, prop getting the crack all the way through. So certainly this resident has practiced a lot. And that's why you see this third solo case is a little misleading. So this resident's obviously done portions of many cases. And again, even then, it's a little tough for this resident to get this first half of the nucleus cracked into quadrants. So there's a little mini groove there, so it's kind of a divide and conquer technique here, but really not having a whole lot of success. And you see every time the nucleus is engaged with the phaco probe, it seems to just eat away at it because it's not that dense of a nucleus. So trying and trying again, and that ball tip chopper sometimes is preferred by residents because it seems a little bit safer, but then finally we got a quadrant up out of the bag. And now once the first quadrant's up out of the bag, the rest is going to be a lot easier. So yeah, there's some clues here we can tell that it's a resident operating, but otherwise it's, you know, pretty good job here. So good moving inside the eye. I like, I like how the eye stays in primary throughout the whole case. Very nicely done. There's a little bit of a nuclear chip there at the paracentesis. I suppose that can be removed pretty easily here with the IA probe. Here comes the IA probe in the eye. I would adjust the sleeve. See the sleeve on the IA probe? There's too much of a gap between that silicone sleeve and the tip, so I would readjust that. Your scrub tech doesn't have the benefit of a microscope, and you'll have a little bit better performance. The reason why I don't want such a gap there is, yeah, I can get caught on decimates, etc., but also the infusion then may leak out of the eye if you're going for like the sub-incisional spot. And so that's why you want to get that infusion sleeve brought up to where it should be, which is flush with that plastic tip there. Capsule bag been filled with viscoelastic. And let's see, probably reloading the lens uh, solo, which is a good thing. When you're a resident, make sure you learn how to load all these lenses. You can't always count on a scrub tech to do it for you. Here again, getting that lens in the eye looks like a single piece of acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. Very nicely done. So yeah, while this is the third solo case for this young doctor, probably the hundredth time that he or she has implanted an IOL in the capsule bag. Good going behind the lens. Fantastic. So there certainly is a benefit of learning by assisting on many cases before you do your solo cases. So you can see this resident has really picked up a lot of the techniques very nicely. So when it's time now for these solo cases, the skill set's pretty good. You can see that Rexus looks nice, overlaps the Optic 360, a little hydration of the incision. The incision construction looked pretty reasonable too. So all in all, a pretty nice case. You know, remember the learning curve for cataract surgery is pretty steep. It's a tough surgery to learn. And so when you're there in your residency, don't give up. Work hard at it. Watch your videos. Record that game day footage. And make sure you have that drive to become better and better every case. Beautiful job here. Thanks for watching.